In this lesson, we'll learn how to approach choosing axis orders for your control objects. Now, axis orders are important only when rotating in Euler mode, which is the default rotation method in 3ds Max. Let's go ahead and grab our rotate gizmo, and with our light control selected, we'll make sure our coordinate system is set to gimbal. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at what happens as we start to use each rotate ring. So the x-axis right now is ideal. We can see how no other rotate ring is affected when we move in the x. That's great. What happens when we move in the z-axis? All right, again, we have some ideal control because that drives the other two rotate rings. Now here's the problem. When we grab the y-axis, as we start to rotate that down, eventually we start to cancel out the x-axis because the y-axis is now driving that x-axis. So if we were to try to rotate in our x-axis, we'd get flipping at that point. So this is something that we always need to be mindful of. I actually find that the default rotate order, or axis order as it's also called, is great in 3ds Max. Let's go ahead and I'll right click and use transform to zero to bring our control back and let's go ahead and move up to the center of gravity because this is another very important control to make sure the axis order is correct on so that our character can do complex performances like flips and anything that would be very dynamic. So you can see as we rotate this all over the place how well the axis order holds. That's exactly what we want. Now how do we switch this? Well, with our control selected, we'd simply go to our motion panel, and underneath rotation, we'd find our Euler parameters. And here it is. So here we have the axis order, and then these buttons here allow us to keep track of each axis. But here's what we want to bring our attention to, the axis order. So notice we have several we can choose from. Let's go ahead and take a look at what XZY does. So when we choose that, you'll see that if we go ahead and move in the y-axis, it's actually going to control the other two because that one is evaluated last. If we were to move in the z-axis, we know that that will control the x-axis. So the x, we know then, will not control any other rotate ring. So that's basically how that order works. So we start to move in any direction. You can see how this eventually will break on us. You can see as we start to twist, how that x-axis is going to overlap the y-axis instantly. So not too good. That's exactly why I prefer just sticking with the default axis order at times. I've animated some performances using this axis order, and I really like the results. This is also great for setting up twist rigs. So let's go ahead and take a look at our arm control. So as we start to, again, rotate this around, the main axis we'd want to concern ourselves with is the twist axis, which would be the X. Because if we tied in a forearm rig so that we can hold volume in the forearm, if we tied it to the twist axis of this control, we'd want to make sure that no matter how we move this object, the twist axis would always hold. And with this default axis order, that most certainly is the case. All right, great. So I'll go ahead and use transform to zero to go ahead and bring this back. But that's basically how we'd go about choosing an axis order. You mainly want to keep your attention on the twist axis. And you can see, with that being the x-axis, I mean, we're getting some great results here. And you can move this wrist however you'd like, and you'd hardly run into any gimbal lock issues. Now, we wouldn't want to do something insane and just rotate this in a way where we would never want to pose the character that way. So just be really careful about that. But as long as we're careful, we can make sure that our poses will hold and we can prevent gimbal lock issues that causes flipping and it causes us to have to go in and clean up animation. All right, so I'll go ahead and grab that control. We'll go to Alt right click and use Transform to Zero to bring it back. So in this lesson, we have learned about axis orders and how to choose a good axis order for your controls. Chances are you might not change your axis order in 3ds Max, but if you ever need to, you now know how.